So here's an important formula that we're going to derive from this one right here that we're just starting to set up and understand. Now, let's use that example again of water melting solid to liquid, and it requires energy, 6.03 kilojoules of energy to do that. Here's what we've established already. This one is, is immutable. And the fact is that when you go from a solid to a liquid, there's an increase in entropy of that system. So that's a positive number. Now again, what do we say? In order for this reaction to be spontaneous, the delta S for the universe has to be positive. You have to be, a spontaneous process will increase the entropy or the randomness of the universe. Well, here's the thing. We know that this number is going to be a negative. We talked about that just a second ago. So, in the last lesson. And if that number is a negative, hey, the only way that this is going to be a positive is this is a, if is a, because this number right here as a negative is a smaller negative than that is positive. Now, okay, now watch this. The delta S surrounding really is quite equal to the negative of the delta H of the reaction over the temperature. It's, remember, delta S surroundings is determined by heat flow, the delta S system by what's happening to those particles, and then, of course, you can actually just get the delta H for that system. I'll show you what that means. Now watch this. Do you agree with me in this regard that the delta S that, uh, for this surroundings right here is going to be equal to this number where we plug in these numbers here? The delta H for this reaction is 6.03 kilojoules. It's positive because it's endothermic. We put a negative in front. And what does that mean? That means then that, remember, energy is being sucked away from the environment around this, this, this equation right here. And if the environment is getting cooler, the molecules in that environment, maybe they're gas molecules in the air, are slowing down. They're becoming more ordered. And so therefore, that is giving us a negative value here, because this is a positive value, endothermic, that gives us a negative for the entropy of the surroundings, which means that the surroundings are becoming more ordered, negative entropy, right? But it really depends, the magnitude of that number, how big that negative value is, depends on the temperature. If the temperature is really high, this number is very small. And this small number added to this large number will still give you a positive value. It doesn't it make sense that if the temperature is very high for this reaction, water solid turning into water liquid, like greater than zero degrees Celsius, that reaction is going to be spontaneous. But if this number is really low in terms of Kelvins, and it's a low, low number, then this number is going to be actually, mathematically, a large number. And large here, plus a smaller number here, could give you a negative here, and the reaction might be non-spontaneous. And at less than zero degrees Celsius, this reaction is non-spontaneous. So I just wanted to show you that we can justify this entropy value here with this formula. And if that's true, now think about this. Just take, if I wanted to just uh, make this delta S surroundings a delta H value, I would have to actually multiply this number here by negative T. So if I multiply this by negative t, I get the delta h. But if I multiply this by negative t, I get this, a negative t delta s system. And so I put a negative in front here. And if I multiply the delta s universe by negative t, here's what I get, a delta g. Delta g is called Gibbs free energy, the change in, 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 in energy or free energy of a system. Here's what this means and what Mr. Gibbs found out. If you have a negative delta G value, you get a spontaneous reaction. A spontaneous reaction, negative delta G. And that number is going to be an energy value. And it's going to tell you how much energy is available to actually do practical work. That's called the free energy. Now, just look at this. This is what this equation is saying. If you take the delta H for a reaction, let's say it's an exothermic reaction, heat is being released. Remember, we could ask the question, well, how many hot dogs could you actually cook with that uh, energy coming off of an exothermic reaction? Well, when we do calculations involving delta H with that type of question, it's not really legitimate. And the reason is, is because the energy coming off that reaction, you have to take away some energy from that. And it's the energy that's going to be devoted to increasing the entropy of the universe. So every, every reaction that occurs always has to make a contribution to the entropy of the universe through energy. And so you take the delta H of the reaction, take away entropy that, that the 
that the delta S system is going to contribute to the universe and the rest of the energy is the free energy that comes off and it's the delta G. And as long as it's a negative, which means energy is released, then you've got a reaction that is spontaneous. Negative delta G value is a spontaneous reaction. A positive delta G value is non-spontaneous. A delta G value of zero means you've got a reaction that's at equilibrium. 